Materials in Revit affect the way items render as well as the way that they display in elevation and section views. In order to adjust the materials, we need to go to the Manage tab and then select on Materials. And that'll open up your Material Browser. Now the first tab over on the right hand side is called Identity. And if you select on the Identity tab, you'll find the name of the material, the description of the material, as well as a wide variety of information that can be associated with that material. One of the things you'll notice that with the acoustical tile ceiling, there's actually not a lot of information currently assigned to it. That's okay. You only need to assign the amount of information to a material that you may need to use later. An example of that would be as if you had a material that you were buying from a specific manufacturer. You could put that manufacturer's information in. If that manufacturer gave you a PDF, or if they had a website link that pointed to information related to that material, you could then link to that here inside of the URL. And the nice thing about that is that you could then schedule it or just select on the material itself and then click on the URL in order to go to that web page or go to that PDF to see more information about the material. An acoustical tile ceiling is probably not the best kind of material that we can be looking at in order to see all the properties the materials can have. What I'd like to do is scroll down here on the list by just clicking on the little arrow down here and then select on Brick Common. By clicking on Brick Common, we can see that our material identity properties have adjusted. Also, we can now come here to the Graphics tab. And by selecting on the Graphics tab, we can see all the different properties that we typically associate with brick inside of Revit. That includes the color of red. The reason why most of your brick looks red inside of Revit is because this red shade is usually applied to the graphics of your common brick. If you wanted to have a different color of red or a different color of brick, you could do that by selecting where we have color and then picking another color either from over here on the left or over on the right. Now I'm just going to click on OK because I do like my brick to be this shade of red. As far as why the brick displays the way that it does inside of an elevation view or in the distance and section views, it's because of the surface pattern associated with that brick material. If we wanted to choose a different kind of brick, such as this brick soldier course, notice how the brick pattern is different, which it should be on a brick soldier course. You should have that straight up and down brick as opposed to the brick common, which has the brick going from side to side. I also want to point out that we have this brick soldier course. If I click on that, this cut pattern is called diagonal down. Select on the brick common over here. This is diagonal up. They have slightly different representations in the cut patterns. The cut pattern would be as if you took a section through that brick material, how would it display? So you can set the way that it looks in the distance and elevation views by setting a pattern for the surface pattern. And you can also set custom patterns for the way that it looks if you take a section through that material by setting up your cut patterns. We can also control the way that this material renders by selecting on the Appearance tab. The Appearance tab shows the way that that material will display when it renders. So you could have the color be blue or green underneath your Graphics tab for some odd reason, but the way that it'll render will be whatever way is associated with it under Appearance. Now if I expand out this category of information by just clicking on the little arrow here, we can see the name of the material, description associated with the material. Right now we can see that it's a masonry material, and we could even change that from just being regular masonry to being CMU. And if we wanted to change the image associated with the material, we could do that as well by clicking where it has the name, not the picture, but the name of that image, then trying to find the appropriate material here off the list. Now these are all materials that actually come with Revit. And you could select any of these materials, and then whatever material that you selected, that would be the material that it used to render with. I also want to mention that if you decide to go out and take a picture of a material, you could use that as well. All you would need to do is point to that picture, click on Open, and then it would render based off of that photo that you took of the material. I'll click on Cancel. And we have some other properties associated with it, including a relief pattern, which will give it a little bit of depth to that material and any kind of tint color that you'd like to add to the material itself. 
So underneath appearance are all the different settings for the way that it needs to render. Now there's also a physical properties tab and a thermal properties tab, which controls that information as well. And this information can then be exported out to other third-party software, and it'll do all of its calculations based off of these properties associated with the materials. Really, the three big tabs that you need to be concerned with is the Identity tab, because that has the name of the material, as well as manufacturer information, and where you can find more information about that material. The Appearance tab, because that controls everything associated with renderings. And the Graphics tab, which is really the settings that you'll use the most when you're inside of the Revit environment, because that controls the shading, which is the color of the material, the surface pattern material, as well as the way that material needs to look when you cut a section through the material.